unless I was like messy or something. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I wasn't that technically gifted. So um, I had to become uh, stronger, fitter, uh, and understand what I could bring to football. And and I think I kind of began to understand that through the journey when when I qualified as a personal trainer, I got stronger. I I I journaled things. I made plans. I wrote plans for people. I looked at their body. Um, what can I help them with? How can I, and not just in their body, but their lifestyle. Welcome to League No Doubt. Thank you, Stuart Sinclair, for being here with me. It's a pleasure. All good? How are you feeling, mate? Yeah, no, I'm good, thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah, good. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while, hasn't it, mate? Um, I think, just to get us started, um, something, obviously, that I would say that, that you have been throughout your football career. How does commitment link into performance within modern-day football for you? Um, well, for me, personally, it was, it was huge. Like, it was everything. Like, that's how I built um the career i had like once i was when i was released um 18 like uh, i went for a period and then i realized like if i wanted to play as high as i could then i had to do everything i could um so i think some players are different like if you're hugely um have like a huge technical ability then sometimes you don't have to be maybe as committed and you're aims are slightly different and you play in a different way but for me like that's how I created a career for myself do you know what I mean like my commitment on the pitch and my my commitment in training and my commitment to my lifestyle um all those things meshed together and that created uh probably the player I was and and enabled me I suppose is the best word to, to be able to play at the highest level I could so see when people talk about commitment and we talk about like young players guys as you're talking about there, with technical ability, you maybe aren't as committed as, as others. And the word commitment gets used, like, oh, you've got to be committed. Like, our older players are telling younger players that like, you have to show commitment. What does commitment look like? What, what do they mean when they say that? Um, well, yeah, like, uh, it's hard, isn't it? Because I think as a young player, you don't quite realise. I, I think as you go through your career, obviously, you you begin to understand more and more why... The, they they say that, but um, I think as a young player, you don't you don't realise that as much, and you don't realise how short the time you have as a as a professional footballer. Even if you have fifteen years in the professional game, it's still a very short period in your life, um, and you don't you probably don't realise that. Um, but I think uh, commitment can mean different things as well. It might not just mean like for me, commitment meant going to the gym every day, writing a journal that we spoke about every day, doing all these things. Um, uh, self-analyzing every day and all those kind of things but commitment to someone else maybe someone who's more technically gifted might be watching clips of a of a footballer who's gifted i don't know yeah like creating um images in their head where oh if i'm in that position i can do that do you know what i mean that might be commitment for them it can be in different forms do you know what i mean it doesn't have to be in the form that i i had it and i think as an older player I know for me, certainly, sometimes I'd get frustrated with younger players who are technically gifted, but their commitment could be in a completely different form to mine. And I would try and take a step back and go, oh, actually, it doesn't have to be just hard work. Like for me, commitment was running through brick walls, but that doesn't have to mean every single player has to do that. You have to have a complemented side anyway. Do you know what I mean? There has to be different players. That's the whole point, isn't it? That's why we love it. I totally agree with you in, in that respect, but I want to get a little bit more insight into what, how you're saying that your commitment uh, uh, and was and what that looked like. I'm interested to know that you just mentioned after you left Luton, so when, uh, give people a bit of perspective listening to this and, and obviously watching, is you were in the youth team at, at Luton, obviously you left school, you were in Prentice for two years, you left Luton after those two years and ended up playing non-league for a while, which we will get into. What did commitment look like to you whilst you were at Luton? And why are you saying that it changed once you'd left? I, I, honestly, Joe, I don't know. Like, I, it's, it's tough because you look back then and think, oh, I'm, I'm sure I was like super committed. But maybe, maybe it just wasn't right at that moment. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, 
I worked really hard. I was super fit. It just didn't happen. It didn't, it just didn't, for whatever the reason was, like you can blame it on a multitude of reasons. Like, do you know what I mean? But it just didn't happen. It was one of those things. So I think after, I, what really changed was when I got qualified PT, when I qualified in personal training, I've become super interested in like, I was always interested in biology and sciences and stuff. So I, I went down this road where I was, um, qualifying as a personal trainer and 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 kind of looking at the human body and all these things and then it kind of um began to click that i needed to be strong i was only like nine and a half stone i think when i left Luton 18 like and they're in the champ it was like there was no chance I, I was unless i was like messy or something you know what i mean like i i, I wasn't that technically gifted so um i had to become uh stronger fitter uh, and understand what I could bring to football, and and I think I kind of began to understand that through the journey. When when I qualified as a personal trainer, I got stronger. I I I journaled things. I made plans. I wrote plans for people. I looked at their body. Um, what can I help them with? How can I? And not just in their body, but their lifestyle, um, habits, all those things. Um, and I did. Then I did that for myself, which I probably didn't do when I was at. at um, well, I definitely didn't do when I was at Luton. Um, so that then enabled me to kind of self-evaluate myself a little bit more. And and um, then I could start adding on top of what I already had, which was quite a good base. My, my Obviously, my brothers um, had played football. My dad had played football. So it, I had a good base as it was, you know what I mean? What was the content of that journal then? Give us a, a little bit of an insight into what sort of stuff you were planning for yourself and, and what a normal weekday if, you know what what was going on in that journal what they allow you to do um it was analyzing everything really it was my like I, I was super i was probably like i don't know i was probably super annoying like around my family and stuff because i was like super into it like I, my diet was super clean like everything was weighed out i would structure all that i would structure all my training plans obviously i was training part-time but then i would train in between those days as well um and then gym stuff um tracked all my my calories tracked my heart tracked it i did everything do you know what i mean i was i was proper into it but it did get, allow me it did kick me forward do you know what i mean how did you know what i mean obviously you were studying at the time so you had more exposure to to what was good and what wasn't the most but for guys listening to this who were, who were trying to emulate that sort of commitment and what that might look like where can they go really to to understand what they're doing and and what is going to benefit them? Oh yeah, like it, it, like places like this. Do you know, do you know what I mean? These obviously back then it was I don't know it's it probably ten years ago, but a bit, bit more maybe. There wasn't probably the information there is now. Like if you go on Instagram and YouTube and um, visit people like you and do you know what I mean in the off season and stuff like that, then you you, you get that. Do you know what I mean, and that probably wasn't happening back then as much as I uh, that I knew anyway. Um, that definitely kicked me forward. That definitely learning to un to understand my body really helped. Like I, I say it to the I say it to the young lads now. Like um, last year, just understanding your body it it, it makes such a big it, in, it does make such a big difference in terms of performance, and even more so now because it's becoming more and more performance based. There's there's more data. People are analysing things more. Um, and whether you like that or not, like that's how it is. You know what I mean? And and you can definitely help yourself by understanding your body more. I wonder if if you've heard recently. I've I've just sort of heard this saying: lazy people do the bare minimum and think it's enough to be successful, and successful people do as much as they possibly can and still worry that they're being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> if if that applies to you. <laughs> I was, I was actually, I was listening to, um, I was listening to a podcast and it was about this like successful businessman and he's like, he's, he's hugely successful. And he was saying like, I still feel lay awake at night and think, oh, it's not enough. And and I think that is, it is an attribute, isn't it? It's something that obviously, I think more so in sport, like it's something that's bred into you. Do you know what I mean? Because, because there's a, every Saturday, every, even in training, there's a win or loss. There's a, there's a judgment. Do you know what I mean? So you, it becomes like, and my missus, like I, I speak to my missus about it. My missus is like, you, you're like, you're always judging yourself. You're all, like, and it's, it is, it's not the, I suppose it's not the best trait. Do you know 
I mean, sometimes you have to like learn to relax, like, but um, it's yes, yeah, it gets bred into. I think. I think that's what you're saying is bang on, really. From now an early age, and I'm talking nine, ten years old, young kids are being judged all the time. Are you good enough to make it? Are you good enough to be in an academy? Or should you get released? Should you move on? Are you good enough for this club, that club? Did you play well in this game? And it's constant mm. now, every match day, like you say. How best can guys, in your opinion, deal with living with judgment like you're talking about? I think it's hard. I do, I, yeah, I, I think it's hard. I don't, I, I've, I don't know. I was speaking to my brother. My brother's got um, a little boy who's about nine, ten, and uh, he was at Luton for a little while. And uh, he doesn't. He plays just normal now. He plays for like um, a, a, I don't know what you'd call it, Sunday or Saturday league yeah, club just, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and um, I think that's good for him. Like, I don't think judgment at that age is right. I, I, I like, I suppose people believe in different things, but I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily right. I think. You, Winning, losing is fine, but not necessarily they should be judged in in that way, like in these kind of academies and that. I don't know if that's right. Um, I think it's great that the academies, you get a high level of coaching and you get those things, but necessarily being judged, that's a tough thing as a, as a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old with all your friends and you're being told you're not good enough or whatever. Um, that, yeah, I, that's hard, man. But um, And what about the older you get? So we're talking about young, sort of like mid-teens, youth team 18 19 years old i don't know i think it's so tough like I, it, the mental aspect of it i think for me like uh when i i know when i was released at 18 it was it was it was t it's tough isn't it like you you probably, you probably had the same experiences as me do you know what i mean most footballers have had those experiences where they've been re kind of released from a club at an early age there's not many lads that, that play professional football that that haven't been released or haven't been told no at some point in their like kind of early career um so it's tough it's it's tough but it's just something that i think within the industry is um you learn to deal with you learn to live within and you go either one or, or the other way didn't you do you know what i mean i wonder if if your experience was similar to mine i mean you were released from luton at 18 but i sort of know that that club for you at the at the time was, was sort of like a big deal to you just as uh, when i was 15 I, you know i left portsmouth they they asked asked me obviously to leave and at that time, I supported the club for years. I went to every home game. I was sort of immersed in the, the whole Portsmouth life is where I'd grown up. And it was like incredibly difficult at the time for me to see a future in football beyond that until suddenly, ah, oh, now I've got an opportunity to play some, for someone else. I, you know, I went to Bournemouth a little bit later after that. Um, but looking back now, I was a 31-year-old on that experience at the time, as we're discussing now, it was incredibly difficult. But without that experience, I probably wouldn't have gone on to have, you know, a, a bang average, but some oh, sort of football career, yeah. football career that I've had. And so similar to you, I wonder if you could give us an insight into, you, you released at 18 from Luton, obviously it's an incredibly difficult period, but looking back now, what did that experience do for your hunger, for your drive? Uh, and how did you flip that negative at the time into a positive? I think... Um... I was surrounded by good people. Do you know what I mean? I was surrounded by my family and my friends and they helped me and, and give me time. And uh, then I think you, you you grow from those experiences. I think obviously any any uh, difficult experience you have, if you come out the other end, you grow from it, don't you? And and you need support and time and, and um, that definitely helped. And then obviously going into the, that shaped me obviously then going into the direction that I went into. So I don't, it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, no way. Like uh, any young lad who gets uh, released from a football club, <laughs> there's a lot of young lads getting released. Just remember, do you know what I mean? If you're a young lad listening, just remember you're, you're like, you're, you're in probably the common side. Do you know what I mean? Lots of footballers get released and lots of footballers deal with it. And, it, and, and it's not the be all and end all. And don't worry, like it, everything will be fine. Do you know what I mean? Surround yourself in with the good people who can support you and work hard and, and um, you you generally end up okay. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's pretty much what I did. Like that's what I did. I worked really hard. I kept pushing myself. And if I wasn't going to be a footballer, fine. I'd do something. Do you know what I mean? I'll be saying else. So I keep working hard, and and uh, it will be all right. Do you know what I mean? So finishing off, obviously, us discussing commitment uh, in terms of a topic. I wonder if you could shed some light on how can guys know if they are committed like what i mean it's very difficult to tell but how can young guys tell if if they are or aren't like what what might that look like um 
yeah, it's tough, isn't it? I, I think um, self. I think the self evaluation thing is huge. Like really self evaluate. Try and record stuff because it doesn't give you an excuse. Like having a journal or having something where you write down even just like a, a notepad that says what you've done through the month. It, it gives you no excuse. It's something um, concrete. It's something there that you can look at and analyze. And generally, if you're committed, you're, you, you're moving in a positive way, not necessarily all the time. But if you look over a longer time frame, so say rather than analyzing yourself over like two weeks, if you analyze yourself over six months a year, generally you're moving forward. Do you know what I mean? That generally equates to being committed and working hard. Um, if you kind of stagnated, maybe you go and see someone or you change it up slightly um, and help yourself in that way. But uh, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to know whether you're committed. Like we just discussed, like you lie awake thinking, oh, I know I'm not committed. Like, do you know what I mean? And that's obviously something that probably helps you be committed and push you forwards again. Um, but it, yeah, it's tough. You always you're always doubting yourself, aren't you? Would you say that you know your your habit of writing things down and planning and and structuring different different stuff was of benefit to you? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. I I say to the lads now, like even not necessarily through day to day, but je but if they're injured, for injuries is superb. Like it's such a good. I think I said it's you once. Yeah, like it's such like a mental help because you write it because I, I, the amount of lads that you, you see you get injured and you really struggle and and f of course like football's your life do you know what I mean uh you live for those for training for Saturdays for kicking a ball like it's your life so no doubt you're going to struggle but if you write it down and you see yourself progressing it's such a lift it helps you so much like it's for sure isn't it for an injury it's it's like it drives you forwards especially in those dark days where you're thinking oh man like like I've still got a X amount of weeks to till I can kick a football, but tell you what, X amount of weeks back, I I I, I was in a boot, or I, do you know what I mean? So that def, I hundred percent. Anyone who gets injured, if the, if they, if um, well, anyone who gets injured, they should definitely do that. Do you know what I mean? I've been moving stuff, uh, you know, recently from from one place to another, and actually found a couple of my injury journals, <laughs> and like, and I flicked through them and thought, like, these are pointless to me now. But at the time, genuinely, they were like so important to me. Like I took it everywhere I was was going in the day. Like I, I wrote down my thoughts, I wrote down my feelings, I wrote down the exercises that I was doing, what weights I was doing. So you you you're right, and I mean, well, like it, right in my opinion, when you say obviously guys are, who are injured, and even not injuries, that like we're talking about commitment mm. and how people can improve by writing stuff down and structuring it. Not only do you hold yourself more accountable, in my opinion, yeah. but you you see genuine progression whether you know instead of just winging it and and hoping for the best yeah that, yeah 100 percent. like look at the the fitness industry it's like almost built on like especially on instagram and that it's built on before and after pictures there's a reason why it's done that like and, and not necessarily that's a good thing um that's like a discussion for another day but it definitely for you personally it definitely helps your journey and you definitely can analyze it and also you can you can if you feel down, you can look at it and go, no, look, two weeks ago I was here or, or a month ago I was here. I am progressing. And and you can also analyse it if you're not progressing. You can go, this, this uh, like, um, six months down the line, I haven't really progressed. What else can I do? How can I analyse it? How can I develop? And and uh, it definitely helps you be more committed, I think, personally. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I want to talk about a little bit then. So, we've, we, you know, we've, we've moved on from Luton and now you're in a position where you're studying. Obviously, you're learning more, more about your body, as we've discussed. And you're playing this, you know, uh, a level of football, non-league, but you're playing a lot of football. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to know the relation between you understanding your body, you know, the, the journals that you're talking about, the structure that you were giving yourself and your actual football. What was the link between the two, and did you feel progression off the back of that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's tough. I, 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 I didn't really. I suppose at that, uh, at those moments, I wasn't necessarily, um, kind of judging myself in that way. But, um, yeah, I, I suppose so. I, 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 yeah, I don't know really. I. I was just playing football, enjoying it, and I was trying to get better, and and um, that's all I really focused on. And as well, see at that level, and because there'll be a lot of guys playing at a non-league level, 
And the word busy at that time, and we talk about people being busy now is, is something, and I've spoken about it with some other guys, that it's, it's now popular. Like if you're not busy, you're, you're getting forgotten about. You're sort of getting left behind a little bit. But in the period of time where you're playing at a non-league level and you're so desperate to improve, you're dedicating your life to, to you know, to improving and, and to being a better footballer. Not many other guys were doing that at the time. Like how difficult or how much of a challenge was it for you to to do that for yourself in an environment where it wasn't really that popular? I, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you, well, you know me as a person. Like, I, I did it for myself. I didn't do it for, there was no, like, I didn't do it for anyone else. Like, I did it because I wanted to be the best I could be. So if you thought I was busy, that's fine. Like, I, it's fine for you to think that. That's absolutely fine. Like, but it doesn't really affect me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I want to play at the highest level I can. And for me to play at the highest level I can, this is what I need to do. And, and I developed and learned and did as much as I could to go that way. Um, I think, uh, like, a good bit of advice for a young footballer is not to worry, like, just push that aside. Do you know what I mean? Not worry about what other people are uh, thinking. Not worry about if someone lets you go. Don't worry about that. Worry about your journey and how you can best affect it and how hard you can work and and what you can do to, to progress forwards. And I think that's what I did. I, I, I honestly, like you say, people did probably think I was busy and um, I was maybe over the top. And I, I know for sure, like my mum and dad were like super... Like at some points, I was super worried because I was like super like with my food and stuff. I was super clean. Like I was, I was really pushing hard. Um, maybe almost to the point where it was like borderline too much. Do you know what I mean? If I look back now, but I was so driven. I was, I, I wanted to play at the highest level I could, and I wanted to do as much as I could, and 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 that's the way I did it. And yeah, whether it was right or wrong, I, I don't know. But I tried to push as hard as I could. But yeah, as as a as a, I never saw it as a negative, but I didn't really think of it like that. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. A lot of guys right. listening to this will be playing in part-time non-league environments where, you know, probably playing playing or training on a Tuesday, playing playing or training on a Thursday, match day on a Saturday, and that's that's their club. You, you know, that's that's what they're sort of being asked of. You were doing much more than that at that, at that time. I know obviously you were working in, in your sort of fitness industry on the side as well, but you were training much much harder than just what was being asked of you um how can the guys obviously listening and, and watching to this that are in a non-league environment that are only part-time training what were you doing alongside that to obviously help yourself push on to the next level i was it's, so i was tracking my my food so i was making sure i was eating at the right times and, and that can be hard when you're working I suppose I was lucky because the industry I was working in was was sport based. You know what I mean? It was in the fitness industry, so I was fortunate that other people that I was working with were the same. Do you know what I mean? They were tracking their food and looking after their diet. So I, I looked after my food and my diet and making sure I was getting in the right calories and stuff. And then I was also doing extras, so I wasn't just training on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I was training pretty much every day. Do you know what I mean? I was going, <laughs> I was going like. I was just going to the local field and like uh, that we had like a big sport, you know, like your local football Sunday league. They had a big pavilion and they had a wall and I would, I would do like, I'd take like three or four balls and I would left foot, right foot against the wall. That, that's what I like. Yeah, I did all that. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing that like two hours. I'd go down there and probably spend two hours, two times, two hours, t twice a week, maybe. Yeah. And so the, you know, obviously I've, I know you for a long time and, Having done the research on your career for about six years, you, you know, you, you, you sort of play in that non-league environment before moving on to Bristol Rovers, that, which was still a non-league environment, but Rovers obviously as a, as a professional environment was much higher. In that six years, the drive, did you ever, was that ever challenged? You know, did you ever, I mean, six years is a long period of time to, to be playing at that level with the perception of, of trying to reach a level in football. Was that ever tested um, for you and, uh, and did you have to do anything to overcome that? Yeah, I, I think to be fair, like it, it probably maybe it wasn't six, it, like for sure it was six years, but it probably wasn't six years where I was really pushing hard. Like it was probably a period, yeah, probably a period of three, four years. Like it took a little, you know, when you get released, like it took a little while. I did that, my educate, did some education, 
um and it started to snowball i was like it kind of i, I don't think i self al uh, analyzed it like that like oh as we are now like it kind of like naturally grew as well do you know what i mean like i was just putting on weight getting stronger i was like looking after my diet and these things kind of just snowballed and it was maybe that it just meshed at the right time do you know what i mean um and then once it started to snowball i really started to put like i was there behind the snowball pushing do you know what i mean um so but yeah there was definitely challenging times there was times um playing i can remember even playing non-league where like you like there was a time where I got sent off where it was just stupid things and there was like I then I missed a load of games and there was times where I got injured. They're all the normal times, do you know what I mean? And then there was big decisions where it's like, do I make that step? Like I've got a comfortable, I'm building my PT stuff, I'm enjoying that, I'm enjoying playing football. There's not the pressure of playing at the top level. Do I make that decision? Even though I super wanted to make that or I was, I, I was really pushing to to get there. It's still a nerve wracking process, isn't it, to step out of, um, like leave your job as such, or like to step away from what you know. Do you know what I mean? I think the first time you stepped away from from that environment that you were in was to go to Salisbury, wasn't it? With obviously with the you know Daryl Clark, the Rovers manager, who took you there as well. But did that move to Salisbury? What did that do for your football? And, and you know, I know your lifestyle obviously was what it was. You were super dedicated, but in terms of your success within football and, and your perception of yourself as a footballer what did that move to, to Salisbury do for you oh yeah it's huge it, gave, it definitely gave me it, like it gave me more time like because obviously uh I think for six months I went there in the January and, I, and then for six months I was still kind of working and staying up half the week type thing and then I went full time pretty much um I think we were in the conference south I went full time and then like that gave me so much more time to then push it again do you know what I mean to 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 analyze my game even more to be able to work on things even more and um it gave me time to be able to recover properly it get like it opened up options that i didn't really have when i was when i was working because when i was working like as a personal trainer a lot of it's like early mornings uh, uh, and late evenings so like sometimes you'd get up at five o'clock and you'd go do clients and so your recovery maybe wasn't always the best if you'd play tuesday night uh, do you know what i mean so um that that then allowed me to kick forwards again and then it started to snowball and I think my age was I was at a good age then I was 24 25 26 that kind of so it was all kind of coming together if you look at it now and you analyze it you think like it kind of all merged it was natural it worked it like it, it, it was super fortunate I was just super fortunate that it, it worked out the way it did do you know what I mean I think you I mean obviously you you discuss with me and you can say fortunate but those opportunities and that success that you had was off the back of the dedication that you'd given years to. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of guys hopefully listening to this are, aren't going to focus on you saying you're fortunate because yes, of course, there's an element of luck and, and football is an opinion based and somebody's opinion was that they wanted you to play for their football club. But that was a result of you having dedicated all that time and all that effort into being a person that you were. Um, when obviously that's that Salisbury move comes and and like you say it's now a bit more full time you get more opportunity to take your football seriously. What became your ambition at that point, and what did success look like for you? Uh, probably to play in the league or to play as a high, not even that actually. Probably probably just to play at the highest level I could. Do you know what I mean? Like just to to yeah to play at the highest level I could. It probably wasn't even to play in the league. I think. Um, that started to materialise then, but it was all, once it started to snowball after the period where I'd like kind of got myself together and I started to see things kind of move forwards and it started to evolve, it was always then just to play at the highest level I could. Like the decision to move to Salisbury, was it was a big decision, um, but it, it allowed me then to move forwards and to play at the highest level I could. So pro it was probably, um, I, yeah, it was always to play at the highest level I could, yeah. When you talk about playing at the highest level that you can, I wonder if you can get into with me a little bit. At the moment, and we're talking about youth football, and now the introduction of under 23s is something that you know we never had when, when we were at the sort of youth team age. It was youth team, first team, and that was it. What under 23s football has done, in my opinion, is just obviously created more players. But now the, there is an enormous amount of footballers looking for a position in in not really that many teams and even at those teams 
11 people can play and there's probably the same amount of people who aren't playing. In that six year period, obviously after you'd left Luton and before you signed for Rovers, you played an enormous amount of football. You played a lot of games. What is the importance at the moment, modern day football, of guys playing football? Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to say like at Sunday league level, but at good levels, what's the importance of people just playing, just being active, being in a match day, understanding how they can be effective? Yeah. Like how, how that's, is, that's the phrase, isn't it? How, understanding how you can be effective in a football match. If you're playing, if you've played your whole way till 22 in, in, in that environment where it's not three points as much and your livelihood is not on it because uh, it, well it's tough isn't it because you're still earning an income from playing at an under 23 level but it, it, it's a lot more cutthroat once you get into that kind of the first team environment um and the the contracts are different and you're you're judged a lot more um so beginning to deal with that as soon as you can definitely helps um but then in the in the swing, you don't. It's not. You don't want to do it too early. You like under nines. It's, it's far too early to be being judged at that. Do you know what I mean? So definitely um, ha- doing loan periods and un- starting to begin to understand those those things and how you can affect the game is is so important. Like I like again, like I speak to like all the young lads, and I think in your head you you have different. I know I did. You have different perceptions of what you might be good at and how you might be able to affect the game to actually how you could affect the game, if you see what I mean. Um, like for me, when I was 16, 17, 18, I, I was playing left, mid, playing left midfield and I was nine and a half stone. And the majority of my, say, league career, I was playing centre mid, at 11 stone as a kind of like combative midfielder do you know what i mean whereas at 16 i was playing in, in luton's reserve team left midfield whipping balls in the box and stuff like that do you know what i mean so so my career developed completely and and, and i've got friends who have played like at 16 17 they're playing center they were playing center forward and and they played the majority career at center half and you hear it all the time don't you uh and you could go on and on and on about it. So it's understanding how you can be effective and how quick you can do it, because the quicker you do it, so that's why the journals and things like that and analysing your game is so important, because the quicker you do it, the, the longer your career and the, more, and, and the more joy you get, because you're, you're being effective in the football match and you're, that's what you want to do. You, like, you want to compete, you want to play, you want to be the best in, in your position, you want to be the best that you can be. So... so being as effective as you can and sometimes that's not doing all the that's that's not the nice sometimes that's not the nice stuff and the fairy tale stuff do you know what I mean it's something obviously interesting that you talk about there because when you are young you think you just do everything like you think you're good at everything you just don't understand like what being effective in a match day looks like um and hopefully you know people listening to this will will start to analyze their game a little bit more and hopefully become effective sooner rather than later but so people can try and relate to what we're talking about Tell me about your journey into into how you became effective and what you did to understand how you could be effective on a match day. I I, I think I just I I analysed my game. I analysed my game a lot. Do you know what I mean? Um, how so? Good, good. Having good, like having good coaches helps for sure because they obviously can un, they understand your attributes and they can determine maybe where you're best um, suited, but. By analysing my game, by looking through, by looking through my when I got higher up, by looking through my clips, and before that, I would I would mentally go through it. Like I would mentally, what did I do good? What did I do bad? How can I do more of the good stuff? How can I cut out the bad stuff? What do I need to um, do to stay in the game? Like all those things, really. Um, and then watching football and 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 analysing that sometimes and and. Uh, a good a good when i was when i left luton i had someone who was looking after me and he said i should i should i think for a young player it's really good i think as you get older you just naturally do it like i naturally would do it now when i played football i'd naturally analyze my game in my head i still look at my clips because uh, you you forget you do you smudge things don't you do you know what i mean but um as a young lad i kept like a, a journal for a few years of the actual game 
So like what I did good, what I did bad, and I I, I didn't necessarily I wasn't able to look through my clips because I didn't have, I didn't have clips, but I would um like keep a journal of of yeah of like say if I was playing left midfield, how many crosses I put in in the first half, in the second half, how many times I tracked back, how many tackles, and I'd just go through it through my through my um uh, mentally through it, and uh, and then I would kind of do a few scores and like how well I thought I did and all those kind of things. And that, that helped me just kind of um, see where I was missing things and where I could become become better, do you know what I mean? So see, obviously in the period of time that we played with, with one another, you were older, you'd gone through that that period of trying to work out what you were effective at and you were, you know, performing to a really high level. Um, I know you won't mind me saying it, but you, you, you know, you, you were one of the best players in our team on a, on a consistent basis Thanks, and you were distinctive in terms of this, the style of play that you had so you obviously knew your game you, you knew what you were good at and, and you did that consistently I'm interested to know obviously before you became that player what did you look like and what did you obviously were talking about that you were analyzing and um, pointing out what was good pointing out what was bad but how what was the process of of obviously that the, the Stuart Sinclair that tried to do everything, which all young players did. And then the Stuart Sinclair who knew his game, knew what he was effective at. What was what was happened? What happened in the in the period in the middle? I think they na- it naturally just it just um progresses because you because you're analysing all the time, that it naturally you naturally knock things out of your game where you think, I oh, that that's not me, I can't do that. Do you know what I mean? That's not that's not what I'm good at. I'm good at this. So I'll do more of this. Do you know what I mean? And I think as you analyse your game more and more you, it just becomes natural that you you keep you, that you develop. Do you know what I mean? Which is why you analyze, isn't it? That's why you self evaluate. It's one of the major reasons why you self evaluate. So you can you can pick through it and what can you do better and and maybe what's n- what you're not good at. Can you get better at that to start off with? And and maybe not if that's not what you're great at. Maybe you look and do what you are um, better at. Do you know what I mean? Um, like in any any form of or walk of life or form of business, you want to self evaluate and see and try and progress forwards, and that's just what I did. And naturally, that kind of began to happen. And I was yeah, like you said, I was I was super fortunate with it kind of all married at the right time and things meshed. You know what I mean, I didn't get an injury in the wrong all those things. There's loads of things with football where it can you can come a cropper, but um, yeah. So yeah, I, th- I think it just naturally happened, but. By self-evaluating, that definitely helped me. Yeah, the pair of us having conversations in the past that you know is sort of used to speak to each other for perspective at home and listening. That me and Sings would spend a lot of time talking about football and, and our journeys. And one of the things that obviously was that we discussed was when you did move to Rovers. Obviously, from Salisbury, it's the highest level that you'd been at at that period of time. The biggest club you'd been at is enormous football club. And your perception of the time, sometimes when players move from one club to another on a high, they almost expect it. They're like, oh, I'm doing really well at the moment. Like, of course, a a big club's going to come in for me. And they they sort of accept that feeling as in like, oh, they're justified or or they deserve it. I know for us having conversations about when you moved to Rovers, it wasn't something that you expected. um, And it wasn't something that you felt that you deserved necessarily but obviously it's something that happened when you signed for a club like Bristol Rovers obviously from the journey that you had had one how did that feel and two what did that do for your football lifestyle and and your ambition and your hunger and your drive um yeah like you said I didn't know what to expect um and I I suppose because I hadn't been in that level for quite a long time I I, you kind of forget a you almost forget about it or you think maybe it's never going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I didn't really, I didn't really worry about it. I didn't like, um, I, it's probably harder now because of social, but I'm not massive on social media. So that probably helps me. But with social media now, there's, there's a lot of um, expectation and there's lots of uh, a, a hype, I suppose, or whatever you want to call it. Um where it just focused, I just focused on myself. Like I was just like, I want to do as well as I can, so I'll just do everything I can to to do as well as I can. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter 
where I was as such. Do you know what I mean? Like I just wanted to play at the highest level I could. And when I was at Bristol Rovers, that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to drive Bristol Rovers forward. And I wanted everyone else to play at high. Like that's that's that was my, my mentality. And that's always been my mentality. Everywhere I've played, I've always one tried to to do as well as I can for myself and play as high as I can. And then two, help the club and help the lads around me to be able to do that as well. Like because that's what that's what football's about. Do you know what I mean, that's that's why we play football. That's why we love it. It's because we, because yeah, because we get to enjoy, like we get to do that. Do you know what I mean? A lot of guys in in football, you know, it's quite common. We've you know we've seen loads of players over the years who can have a positive move, and because they're off the back of a positive move, suddenly the the perception is, oh, I've I've made it, or, or I've got to the level where I wanted to, so I can I can take it easy, I can take my foot off the gas. Um, you didn't do that. Like, a, you know, I, I know you didn't do that. What are the benefits and what you've done your whole career and something that hopefully people can emulate is is that you've held yourself responsible for all of your stuff. There's no, like, oh, it's this person's fault, it's that person's fault, it's because of this, it's because of that. When people get positive moves or moves from any club to one another, how best can they approach entering a new environment um, and... How can, as you're saying, like you, you, you immersed yourself in Bristol Rovers, you wanted to drive that club forward. How can people moving into football clubs become that person? Um, by doing what they did, obviously, previously. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, the reason why you got that opportunity is generally because you were doing things in the right manner and you were pushing forwards. And I think um, worrying about what you, um, what the perception is or what you, sh what, um other people think or the pressure of it is that's that's wasted uh, like i don't know it's, it's wasted energy like all you need to do is just keep focusing on what you're doing and how you can drive um yourself forwards and how you can drive the club forwards and the team forwards and if you do that i think generally you end up on the right side do you know what i mean if if yeah that's that i don't know i don't know what you think but that's that that's how i look at it yeah i mean so up until that point in so Rovers full time environment, Salisbury was a bit, was obviously a bit more of a full time environment as well. But when you were part time and obviously you were doing training on the side, I'm interested to know when you were in a full time environment now at Rovers, was that enough for you, or or did you do more? Did you find a way to do more? <laughs> no, I think uh, yeah, you do more because it's not like what we just all that stuff we just spoke about. It was natural. That's what I'd done to get to where I was, and I wanted to keep pushing forward. So that's what just what I carried on doing. But the good thing, the good thing that happened is, as I stepped up the levels, I got more resources as well. Like I, I got to meet people who are like-minded who wanted to do the same thing. And because when you're in a part-time environment, it's different, isn't it? Some people, like they might have done all that, and then now they're like their their interest is maybe something completely different, and that's absolutely fine. That wasn't my interest at the time when I was playing part-time football, um, but it was some people's interest and I mean they, they had a family and they were they had other things going on and that, that's that's cool I wasn't there but they were and I tried to help as much as I could but um, that wasn't my situation so when you go to like a full-time environment say somewhere like Bristol Rovers that um, is a huge club great heritage great history unbelievable fans great backroom stuff you've got you have so many more resources do you know what i mean so i just try to 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 use them more utilize them more um and then that then then and then that helped me again it pushed me forwards again do you know what i mean i, I learned things off the physios off the snc's even off the players do you know what i mean which maybe you probably don't as like the 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 further you go down as such do you know what i mean or the lower you go down having conversations with you know people with different um uh, practitioners so sports scientists physios their their opinion is that players don't use them enough and obviously a lot of guys will be listening to this in similar environments where they have people like that to uh, you know at their disposal how did you use them and, and what benefit obviously you know obviously they're a benefit but how did you use them and and how did they help you just I just interacted with them all the time. I, that, like I would ask them to write me programs. I would ask them, and not not what they had to do as a job. But I was asking them to do extras. You know what I mean? I was like, right, I, I want to work on this. How can I, how can I do more of this? Look, this is the knowledge I have. This is what I think I could do. But can is there anything else I can add? Do you know what I mean? Because that, that, well, that's that's what they're there for. 
Do you know what I mean? Like that's what that's what we do. And then can you get other players to do it with you? Do you know what I mean? So you can learn and develop and 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 push forwards. And uh, that definitely, yeah, that helped me. I think it helped. I think as a, I, as I said again, like we were fortunate because that change room that we had was all very is very similar, wasn't it? Like we were all had the same mindset. So that really helped because you all kind of learn and developed, and it's super special. It was a, it was a, it was a magnificent time in in my life. Like lots of people of the same mindset, pushing in the same direction, driving forward. It's it's like yeah, it was it just it was a perfect period, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? And obviously that first season in in the national league, you guys were you know incredibly successful. Um, we get to the end of the season, obviously, and, and your emotions in a minute. But that during the season, when you are having success, you are not only winning as a team, but it's, you know, you as, as an individual are, are playing a lot of football at the highest level that you had been up until that point. Um, what does that success feel like? And for you, again, like what, what did that do for you and, uh, uh, and you know, how you felt about yourself? Uh I don't know. I, I never really thought of it, really. I, um, I don't really know. I, I probably didn't, um, like a bad, like, like what we said about, like a bad trait of mine is to kind of just look forwards. And I probably didn't take enough time to be able to kind of enjoy it as much as what I probably should have. Looking back now, it was such a special time. that, like, And I was so focused on moving forward to that. Maybe I didn't. It's such a fine, it's such a fine balance. It's a hard balance, isn't it, to be able to push forwards and smell the roses or whatever, whatever the saying is. Um, so I was, I was, I was super happy. Like I, I but I, I did, <laughs> I definitely wanted more. Like I, I wanted to push forwards. So we're talking about that, obviously, that national league season where, where Rovers are promoted up through the playoffs, Wembley Cup final, penalty shootout, Lee Mansell scores a penalty. Um. But obviously, we're talking about you specifically. You played all the football up until I, I think just before the playoffs. Um, you get injured, and and that last bit of the season, obviously, where where it's major success, everybody's buzzing, but you're not directly involved in that. You know, I've been through that myself. I wonder if you can give an insight to anybody listening, um, fans, players, what that feels like what sort of challenge that is to to feel pleasure and obviously unpleasure in the same moment uh yeah yeah it's so it's hard to it's hard to explain isn't it because because everything was focused towards that but you don't feel like you added to it because when you added to it it was so far ago like i think i was i I did. I broke my foot, and then I come back, and then thirty minutes in, I I uh, I did my MCL. So, I, and and when I did my MCL, it was gates head away. I think it was like February or something, uh, end of February, and uh, and literally I was in tears because I knew we, I knew we were going to get promoted at that point. I thought we like we are pushing. This is like I want to be involved in this, and and I think and coming off the pitch, I was in, I was like I I don't know. I broke down. I was like full on like like emotional like. Um, and I think it was probably all that pent up frustration and energy from all the time where I'd really worked hard, and then to see it like kind of it like slips away, even though it doesn't, because I still got to play in the league and I still had all that 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 like you say that that those amazing times. But um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a weird sensation. But um, I think now that I'm older, I look at it and think, well, I did I did add like I was I was involved in a lot of the games, and I. Even though maybe I didn't even play, I still like was pushing the boys. I like I still was went to every game and like tried to help as much as I could and did everything I could to push forwards. Um, even though I wasn't on the pitch, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's not a nice, it's not a, it's not a nice feeling. It definitely sours it. Um, Andy uh, Monkhouse, who was he would was in the side and he was he was um, he was older then. He was like my age then. Um, coming to the back end of his career like super good player played like great level like awesome person and um he was like what are you doing like you should be like it was good because because i was really struggling with it i felt really guilty that i hadn't played and i felt guilty that i was enjoying it do you know what i mean because it's like almost like well, was like, I, I wasn't there do you know what i mean but you, yeah so i was super guilty and he was like what are you doing like you've played like you've played so many games you're involved in it all like 
don't be stupid like do you know what i mean and that helped because he, he was someone i looked up to and thought he's had a like a fantastic career do you know what i mean super good professional super fit pushed all the time and um like i was like that was like a nice fit do you know what i mean it was like a warm feeling i was like oh that like maybe i did do you know what i mean so that helped for sure um Something that I recognise that you were really good at, thanks from from quite an early um, period of time of us playing with each other, that that when you weren't directly on the pitch, and f- for most of the time that we played with each other, you were, but whenever for whatever reason you weren't, or you were injured, or or weren't starting a game, you still managed to add value to the team, and you still managed to have a positive impact on the people around you, even on a match day that you weren't directly involved in. Um, I'm wondering if you for people obviously who are you know who want to become better teammates who want to be better um in a group who want to add more value and have more influence on on the people around them in a team if you can give us an insight into your thought process and how you manage to you know how you manage to do that i, I think um like as a footballer you have to be selfish yeah yeah you, ha- you have to understand that it's 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 a dog eat dog or whatever you want to call it that it's performance based and you you have to be if me and you play centre midfield in the same position, we do the same things, I have to be better than you and you have to be better than me. Um the the as you get older you begin to realise that um there's times where I'll play better and there's times where you'll play better. Do you know what I mean? There'll be periods in in through the season, there'll be games that where you'll do better because you're taller or whatever. Um I didn't realise this as a young player, but I always just thought, well, if if I'm not playing, then if I can help everyone else do well, then that helps helps me because I'm in the same team, aren't I? Do you know what I mean? So that was always my motto. But now, as you get older, you realise that well, the, the it, that's just the way it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no there's 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 no way of getting around it. Do you know what I mean? Like, just as a as a within the game, like that's what happens. Do you know what I mean? Some players get picked for certain reasons. It's not necessarily just on performance. Do you know what I mean? A manager has all these different things going around his head. So as a young player, the sooner you understand that, the better, because therefore you're not thinking it's a dig or directly on you. Do you know what I mean? Um, but at that period, I, I I just wanted to do as well as I could. And if I wasn't involved, I wanted to help everyone else do as well as they could. Because one like that's what you should do as an, as a as a human being do you know what I mean? like that's just what you should like that's how you should be and two because like you want to move forwards so being negative you're not moving forwards do you know what i mean so how did you approach yeah. that then like, i'm gonna i'm gonna set a scene for you right like rovers we've got a home game you know because we've done shape on the friday they might not necessarily be in the team for that day but you know you're going to be a substitute what's going through your mind and how do you approach that situation Exactly the same as if I was playing. I'll do everything I can to, to help the team for, move forward. Do you know what I mean? And that includes helping everyone who's playing. It includes being prepared. It includes pushing. It includes everything. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, like I'm not going to get anything out by being negative or making a sly dig at someone or 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 being down. And, and, and you, you, like, one, you have to manage your emotions because it's a performance-based... Um, industry and and generally if you can manage your emotions you're going to get yourself uh, put yourself in the best position to perform um physically and mentally um so i wanted to do that and and two what i, I just don't understand what you're getting out of it do you know what i mean like i never i, I just don't understand that mentality like i i what's the, like what's the point do you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't know what you think, but like, what is the point? What are you getting? Do you know what I mean? No, I agree. It took, it took me a long time, especially growing up, as you say, to to acknowledge that if the team that I was at was having positive things happen, even if I wasn't directly involved in that, that it was going to re- reflect positively on me. Just so selfish it, it, uh, at a young age, like being so desperate to, to be the person who played. And you obviously talking about that experience of you being promoted obviously out of the conference with Rovers and not feeling a part of it immediately was like I I was so I was at the Bournemouth at the football club until from the moment they got relegated from League One into League Two and then every time they were successful and got promoted I was at the football club so them being from obviously like League Two almost got relegated minus 17 points I think it was stayed up promoted promoted 
championship promoted. I was there the whole time, but I only played like I didn't play any championship games. Like I was, I was way off that. Um, I played about ten or twelve in the year that they won League One. Hardly any, obviously, when they won League Two. So I was similar to you. Like I never felt like I contributed to any of it really, but I was still in a positive environment. And for that, obviously, I end up learning that. I might not be in the team, like I, I might not be the best player. Um, and obviously, eventually, when I moved on and played, it allowed me to be a better teammate to the people around me because I understood how people were feeling when they weren't in the team. Uh, and for me, that was a massive, obviously, a massive benefit to be able to to know how to deal with the people that weren't having as much success as I was in that moment because I'd also experienced that yeah. myself. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, that, that's exactly it, isn't it? But you, you think how much you learn there, and if and if you were always positive, think how much your mind would be open, and you would have probably learned even more. But as a young age, at a young age, you probably don't, you 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 don't get that. And and I would probably been the same if I was sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, uh, uh, and I hadn't had all the experiences I'd had elsewhere. I probably would have been exactly the same, like thinking, oh, I should, I like I should. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but I think I was fortunate because it happened later on, and um, uh, I'd I'd kind of um, developed different skills and a different skill set because I was a bit older. Um, maybe that did that did definitely maybe that helped because it's definitely a younger thing, isn't it? You know, like uh, there's a young lad at, at, at Warsaw who, who sometimes. Um, does it and it, 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 you can see it, affect, it, it affecting him do you know what I mean and he and he, you just think you're such a good player just to stick do you know what I mean but you can't he, he has to go through that himself like you did not like I have do you know what I mean uh, sometimes there's nothing you can say that can they have to experience it in themselves do you know what I mean um, but I do I, I just yeah I don't know I don't, I don't think you get anything out of it being negative so if you can um, and even if you feel yourself doing it, try and shake yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like I so you, so it's a natural thing, isn't it? Because you 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 want to play and you want to you want to be as, as successful as everyone else. And and like what we've discussed before, fo football's performance based, and it's about winning football matches. And and you want to be part of that eleven that's that's uh, starting. But what about the geezer who comes off the bench and scores the win? Do you know what I mean? So those things can happen. So you want to be positive. Listen, since the um, so moving on a little bit, you've obviously promoted into the football league. You could easily become someone who's like, ah, oh, this football league thing that I've been trying to reach is is I've done it. Like I can I can rest a little bit easier. Um, but the off season now and pre pre season, as it's spoken about, is something that obviously I provide sessions for. Something that I'm sort of heavily involved in with with lads on the south coast. It's become so popular now that guys come back fitter than almost what they left um and it's such an important part now of football is this off-season period where people can improve you were doing that way before it was popular you were doing that way before it was you know people were just turning up back for pre-season and using pre-season to get fit again um how important do you think this period is now in between finishing one season and starting another in modern day football Oh, oh yeah, it's huge now, isn't it? Because because really now as a modern day footballer, you're an athlete, you're an athlete. So really, everything you do in in any period of the time of you being an athlete for the whole time you're a professional footballer um, is going to affect your performance. Whether that be do too much or not do enough, um, you're affecting your performance. You know what I mean, so it's it's huge, it's hugely important, and I. I like like what we we've said like I, I began to understand that from my from doing the pt stuff and and uh um i was fortunate like i had a little bit of background knowledge which then i could apply and it it, it, it helped me um and yeah i would i do loads in in the off season and, and and try and do things that i wouldn't be able to do in in season um because you're playing so yeah talk to me a little bit then about what an off season for you look like uh, yeah, not enjoyable. <laughs> like you'd have like a couple of weeks. I I have a bit of time off, um, a few weeks off, and then and then it was just back to um, like kind of a progressive program to 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 hopefully make me as fit and as strong as I could be. Uh, um, more, yeah, you could go right into depth, but like more more lots of stuff that I couldn't do in in uh in what in, like in, let's go in into depth. Like, what, what, so I yeah, so I do lots of I would do. 
I would cycle through programs and and um, do a lot of leg stuff and, and and build some strength in my legs that I maybe wouldn't have been able to do as much in 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 season. And then what I can do is try and maintain that. And then if I do get injured for a little bit, I could jump back on it and 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 push a bit harder again. So I didn't get like a, a flat spot. So I do quite a lot of leg work, uh, and then I would do quite a lot of um, kind of uh, speed endurance type stuff where I was. I was I was pushing pretty hard, um, and and that I couldn't do in 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 season as well. That would lead then into me being able to do it in games. So yeah. And was that sort of obviously the period of off season now? It's about six to eight weeks usually for for a footballer. How much of that period of time were you spending on trying to improve? Uh, quite probably. I'd probably have two weeks off. I'd probably have two weeks off. But prob- yeah, probably about two weeks. Um, and then I would start to slowly work in what, where I wanted to be, and then I'd 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 platform it all out. I'd write it all out and work out, and then it'd progressively get tougher. And then I would deload slightly before um off uh before preseason. Sorry, um, and then the good thing was was once I got to Rovers and and um, maybe after that first year, um like we got more staff again so we got more s and c's and stuff and more physios and then i could speak to them in in the um like off in the off season and um kind of say like what's like what are we leading for what would be like the kind of what are we looking like structure wise for pre-season so i could work towards like kind of meshing it and intermingling it and then in in the um in uh, pre-season, I would still kind of try and work on legs and stuff because you didn't. It's not much time, is it? Six weeks, do you know what I mean? So I try and use it all the time I could, but I also knew that I needed to rest as well. Um, yeah, you've got more of an insight because you obviously because of your education, your background, than most footballers may do. Um, but what are the sort of stuff that if you, so if you're going to prescribe a, an off season now for for a player, say say for myself, you're going to prescribe it for me. What sort of things do you would you say that I need to be doing in an off season? What sort of things the guys at home in this off season period need to be doing? Yeah, so I I, I would kind of strength stuff. You don't not necessarily power stuff because the power stuff you can do more in the season because you can you can tailor it. Do you know what I mean? But I would do strength stuff where I, I would have real bad doms. Do you know what I mean? For quite a sustained period, so I I could do that. It's super tough. Like um, so I'd do that, and then I would work on my speed endurance. So uh, I'll do that. What does um, the speed endurance session look like? So I would work on, yeah, it's hard because I'd work on my heart rate. So I would I would push my heart rate and then I would work on how quick my heart rate, heart rate would recover and then push it again. And then I would try to get that um, progressively better through the, through the off season. So, um, so that's obviously you were running. Yeah, that's running. Yeah, but you could do it on a bike though. Like now more so because I'm older, I'd do it on a bike. But um it, it, yeah, because it's super specific. Do you know what I mean? So, if you wanted to really like, they, they'd be better off seeing someone like you or going and seeing a specialist who knew what they were doing and looked at your injuries, look, broke it all down. Do you know what I mean? Because the program I would prescribe for me would be different to the program I prescribed for you. Like, well, like you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then I would be doing football specific stuff. So I'd be working on kind of reactive speed and stuff like that. And um, I see like a lot of drills where it's like. Uh, just passing drills but what i would try and do is make it reactive so i'd be thinking about it as well um just so like it's it's more specific to football because obviously in a football match you have to be aware of what's going around so by making it reactive and by having things going on in in kind of your peripheral vision and stuff like that it allows you then to kind of merge into football a little bit easier there's nothing wrong with doing those those um those drills for technical ability i did a lot of that for technical ability but um for kind of merging it into football, then I would start to progress it into reactive. So I'd start with kind of technical drills and then begin to progress them forwards into more reactive drills as I got closer to pre-season. I would also start with kind of the heart rate stuff and that, and then I would start to progress them and make them more interactive with kind of football-based skills. Do you know what I mean? So I'd be doing it with a football or I'd have a football involved somewhere or I'd make it reactive and stuff. So, um, But yeah, the programmes I would... Prescri- pres- prescribed for myself as a centre midfielder would be different maybe to a, a programme that I prescribed for say a centre half or do you know what I mean um, there's lots of different things so so um, 
but researching it, there's so much information out there. As a young footballer, there's so much information out there. Do you know what I mean? Really, like study it. Like that, that, that. That's how you get better. How you get better, really. When you arrived back for pre-season, you know, the, uh, I've done pre-seasons with you, so I know the sort of shape that you were in. But what are the benefits of you know we're talking about work in the off season, but what are the benefits of turning up fit? What are the turn? What are the benefits of of impressing people with your fitness in pre-season? What what can that do for you? I think it. I, I think one thing it does, which is really good and really important, and probably I didn't really think about it before, but it gives them like it makes the manager trust you because he knows you. It, because he knows you haven't gone away and just done nothing. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And 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 uh, whether you go away and do nothing or you just go away, and, even if you don't do like what I I was doing, even if you just do a little bit, like it um, it definitely. I think it definitely in the manager's eyes they they look at you and think right. Well, at least he hasn't got. Do you know what I mean? It definitely can earn the manager's trust. I think. I want to talk to you a little bit uh, more, and that sort of leads me on to. The manager trust in you and your teammates trust in you and your influence on others. Um, when I arrived at Bristol Rovers, you were, I think, 29 at the time. Um, and you were playing consistently. You were performing to a really high level. Uh, and you could have easily taken it taken it steady, get to the age of 29, sort of know your body a little bit better. But you were consistently, and this isn't to try and embarrass you, you were consistently doing extra on your own stuff daily and you doing that obviously and I was desperate like and I was doing different stuff I was you know I was doing my own extras and stuff but watching you and being around you and having conversations with you about the benefits of you doing that was something that I wanted to try and emulate and I was wondering if you were ever aware of the influence that you had on other people and whether that was something that you were aware, yeah whether you were aware of it or as well i mean we've discussed it and you were saying that you do most of the stuff for you know for yourself but were you aware that, that what you were doing had had an influence on others no probably not i was I, I, like i was doing it yeah like i wanted to play at the highest level i could and i wanted to drive the club forwards and and i suppose if you look back now that probably did help uh but i also wanted to help people like if i had something that i could like if we could do it together and we could both get something out of it and we could both push forwards and great even if it was i stayed extra and just passed to you do you know, do you know what i mean like like i just thought like it, it moves the club forward maybe it was naive i don't, I don't know maybe it's naive of me to think that because i wasn't in that environment all the time but i just wanted to to play and do as well as i could and push forwards as as much as i could and I, I, that's not I, yeah i don't see any any negative there do you know what i mean this um this perception of extras mm. is in when you talk about footballers and they talk about training as oh he's doing extra what does the doing extra mean and what benefit can that doing extra have? Yeah, I, th I think, um, well, I always try to do stuff specific to me. I would try and evaluate my game, like what I was good at, what I wasn't so great at, and then try and work at how I could become better and, and speak to the coaches and ask them. And, and um, like, even some games I would say to... Marcus, um, or or, or say to Yates, he says to one of the coaches, can, can like at half time, just tell me what I can do better. Do you know what I mean? Like how I can progress. What what, what do you know what I mean? And I I think um, I, I would also do that in training. Like I would say to one of the coaches, oh, can can like can we do something that's going to make me better? And that and that and that's just what I what I did. And and um, and yeah, like that. Yeah, I didn't even think anything of it. Like that. That's what I was. That's what I wanted to. I wanted to play football at the highest level. So therefore, I had to practice. Do you know what I mean? So I know we're talking about you specifically, obviously centre midfielder. What were the sort of extras that you were doing? Like, what did that look like? How did you? I know you're talking about the coaches, but how did you come up with what you were going to do? Um, research, like studying, looking, talking to different people that I knew, talking to, reaching out to people. Um, yeah, speaking to the coaches. Um, all, all, all of those things. Speaking to people who, who are in the game, who, who are a different, uh, a different club, being trained by different people who might have different ideas, and and trying to um, all, all kind of weave that in. Do you know what I mean? Um, and and doing things that I'd done before that maybe helped me, and 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 trying to tweak them, and what, how else can I improve them? Do you know what I mean? That, all those things is is um, what what I tried to do in 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 the extras and try to 
try to just keep developing. I, I would do uh, have a structure for the extras as well. First of all, I'd do this, and then I'd start to add other things in and see if I can progress it forwards. And yeah, so um, I, I think I just thought about it a lot, and I tried to to to, to always be progressing it and moving forwards. Like, I mean, maybe you didn't realise at the time, obviously, what a positive influence you were on others. But for guys that are playing and listening and uh, and you know wanting to have more of an influence maybe on the people around them or want to be seen as you know as a leader um and in that respect what can they be doing that you know that might benefit that for them and might do that for their their own football career uh, I, I think just being positive like <laughs> do you know what i mean like being positive as much as you can and 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 helping people around you just it, that creates a good environment like I, I know it's performance based and it can be tough and there's uh negative times and and we all go through that and we all experience it and we all uh say negative things and and moan and all those kind of things but the more you can be positive and the more you can help people around you that that only can benefit towards um helping the club and helping you as a not only as a footballer but as a person do you know what i mean um and and I think that's the the best way to look at it. Do you know what I mean? Don't just look at it as a football, um, as as based around football. Look at it as based around uh, um, trying to just be uh, be a better person in general. Do you know what I mean? The uh, so I want to touch on players now. Obviously, their relationship with with managers. You had a really good one with Daryl Clark, and obviously towards the end of your Rovers career. Um, for whatever reason, you you found yourself out of the team, and and you know we both found ourselves out of the team, and at that period of time, we both understand how difficult it is for a manager to pick a team, and 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 I would like to think that it was never personal or anything, uh, or anything like that, but it happens to so many people and players throughout the country that only, and we've discussed it already a little bit, but only eleven guys can get picked, and the amount of players that aren't getting picked is enormous, really. Um, so for the insight of anybody listening, maybe, you know, experiencing this too and not being picked by their manager, what does it feel like, obviously, to to go through that? And how can guys really deal with that emotion? Um, yeah, I've, uh, like we've discussed, having people who can support you and then trying to use that in a, in a positive way. Do you know what I mean? Like, use it as a, as a, as a challenge. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're right not every not every manager is going to pick you or or you might go for a rough part in your career where you don't play that well but that's okay because that's that's it happens you know what i mean um like like learn to to get good people around you whether that's through um uh, your family through friends through a different resource entirely through a counselor do you know what i mean that's absolutely fine but try and have a bit of a support network someone you can talk to and and um and then use it in a, in a, in a positive way because it is tough isn't it you you do like it is a negative so however you spin it it's still a negative so it's hard for you to accept so therefore you need to accept it in the best way you can and you need to take time to accept it you can't just go all right i'm going to be positive because that's not it's not realistic people don't you don't do that do you, you there's a period where you're like oh man this is this sucks so kind of use that and understand it and 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 analyze it the best way you can and then try and move forwards and think right well okay he 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 doesn't like me or he doesn't want to play me or whatever the reason is there's a player who's performing better at the minute than me what can i do now to one either win him back or for him to play me or two go somewhere go somewhere else and 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 play and um and progress forwards so that, that's how i looked at it when when uh uh graham come in I, I we spoke and um i was frustrated and stuff but i just thought right well i need to put my head down i want to be the best in training i want to do everything i can and therefore uh, uh, um there's no excuses like i don't look back now and think there's something i could have done extra do you know what i mean that that would have aff would have maybe affected his decision i try to do everything i could for, for for me to play i was ready to play when he called upon me i i didn't go out on a Friday night. I didn't. Do you know what I mean? All those things that kind of it, it, it can happen because you're you're in a negative headspace. Um, 
I got back on my path as quick as I could to to um, sway him. And and okay, hold my hands. He didn't. He, I did. I didn't like. I didn't resign. I did. He didn't choose me. Fine. That's that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that's football. Like it's like fat. It's like a, like supporters, isn't it? Like you go on social media, half of the supporters love you and half the supporters don't. And that, but that's okay because that's football. That's the whole point. Like you sit there as a as a as a footballer and and look at the TV and go, oh, I really like the way he plays, and I'm not so keen on the way that that he plays or they play or the manager style of play or all those things. But that's the beauty. That's why we love it, isn't it? So I think. Um, the quicker you can get on back onto your path and and work hard and and have positive people around you and and push forwards, the the better the better off you are. Not just not just in a performance based thing, but as as a mental space uh, for yourself as well. Do you know what I mean? I think something you talk about quite a lot, and it sort of shines through in in everything that we discuss. Really, is that you hold yourself accountable and you're responsible for all your own stuff, and by doing that. You almost take away that if for whatever reason somebody else's opinion of you is negative, that it's fine because you've done all you possibly can um, and there's there's no way that you can find an excuse that's going to allow anybody to pick anything into you. Would you say that that's, you know, an important, uh, I guess, personality trait that, that guys who want to get into football should pick up? Yeah, for sure. I, I think uh, I was fortunate because I experienced the supporters and experienced the intensity a little bit later I think as a young player it's super hard and with social media now because as a young player like I didn't really have social media when I was 18 so it didn't um we had what did you have like myspace a black room, so. black room messenger yeah, and stuff face, like that yeah facebook was just started <laughs> yeah so you, you didn't really have as much um kind of peer pressure or judgment on you so I think now as a younger player it is it is tougher but um I think all, all you can do is focus on yourself and push. If they if they don't think you're a good player, then that's their, their opinion. You can't like you like you can try and prove them wrong by by pushing forwards. But the more time you dwell on it, the worse the the um, the worse it becomes. I, th- I think. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, you obviously had a you know a great relationship with Daryl Clark. What does that feel like, and how can guys obviously? I don't want to say how can they get um, positive relationships with the manager because it's difficult. But but what does having a good relationship with the manager look and feel like? And and how do you think other guys can get themselves into a position where they can have that? Um, yeah, I've, I, I I I think I was super lucky. Like uh, um, we kind of developed together. Do you know what I mean, he his managerial career, like he stopped playing literally as I as he took me to Salisbury. So like our our careers probably like in terms of his managerial career, my playing career kind of progressed together. So that was super fortunate in itself. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and helped a lot. Uh, but I think by doing what we what we spoke about, by being a positive influence and and trying to be, even when. When those negative things happen, when those mistakes, like you get sent off or you don't get picked, those moments, they define you. They're the moments that define you. Like They're the moments that really matter. Like if you look, like the scoring the goal and the winner and stuff, that, that that's wonderful. But when you can look back and go, do you know what? Like I, this happened, but I come back from it. They're the moments that are really magical. Like they're the moments where you... you you had to work really hard, do you know what I mean? Not just physically and mentally, but mentally as well. You had to really dig deep. And, um, like, if you can manage those moments, one, there becomes less of them because you're being more of a positive influence and you're growing and becoming a better person. And two, then the positive things come. Like, that, do you know what I mean? So, um, and and that in turn then leads towards hopefully the manager trusting you more, picking you more, uh, um, and not necessarily being your friend more, but but having trust in you and and trust in your ability and and trust in you that when those negative things do happen or the the team goes one nil down, you won't um, you won't react in a bad way. You you might have a two minutes period where you, where you struggle, but after that you're back on and you're 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 full throttle again, um, and and. And I think that's it's important, isn't it? That's important in performance for sure. Well, it's important in any walk of life to be honest, Joe. I think. You um you analyse your your career obviously really well, but can you remember any of those moments for for me now that you did that that you managed to to feel that way and you can look back and say that 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 was a moment that I that I overcome something. Oh like, yeah, like all my injuries, 
I had loads of injuries. I mean, loads of horrendous injuries where, where like Gates said, where I'm crying on the pitch, where like I could have like just gone and not really worked hard and just floated through and then um, played a couple of games in maybe League Two the next year. And I think my contract, I think, in fact, I think my contract was up. So I was injured and then Rovers give me uh, 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 another contract and I was I'd, I, I was only just fit so I could have like just just turned away but I, I, I tried to, to to progress forwards in a different way like all right I can't play on the pitch but can I go in the gym and become stronger and and fitter in a different way and uh, can I help people around me um, so yeah so I tried to do that as much as I could yeah uh, listen mate just to, to I want to get into a little bit because at the moment in football we're seeing stuff like, uh, for example, at the top, top level, Marcus Rashford is, has another aspect to his life where, you know, where he's, he's obviously doing the, the stuff with the school dinners and, and he's having a real big influence on, on people in that respect. And that's something away from football that people are now saying, oh, that's going to affect his football. Um, something that you've done your whole life, your whole career, is that interest outside of football. It's, you know, your life when you, when you leave, a, you know, you're, perception of a footballer isn't quite like what you know the stereotype isn't what they see in you know in your life um what i really want to know i'm um, sort of getting to the end is is how your interest outside of football may have benefited your football and how important do you think it is to step away sometimes from and i know you're intense i know you obviously you've spent your life dedicating your life to football but how being able to step away and clear your mind and and have other interests what sort of benefit that can have on on your football life uh, yeah i think um like like what we spoke about it, it just gives you an outlet do you know what i mean it's just it, it it gives you a different like like you say football's intense and you have to focus super hard and you and there's a lot of challenges um and it can be really short lived. You can live on like a contract every year, and there's there's all these things that go on. So, be it, but but so by having a different outlet, it, it just gives you a space to be able to step away from it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've I've tried to develop myself as a person, and 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 um, by having those other outlets, it, that in turn has also helped me and developed me as a footballer and helped me develop in 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 a different aspect look at like me having a having an interest when i got released then having an interest in the fitness industry then allowed me to progress my football probably even more so that maybe i would never have achieved so um if 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 you like you are struggling and you you feel like everything is on football by maybe just having a different outlet or or kind of opening a door somewhere else that maybe is not just football that might allow you to kind of see that part of your life like the football part of your life in a different um a different perspective yeah i appreciate it thanks listen um to finish what has been genuinely you know an amazing conversation um, and I'm glad we've got this on record because it's sort of similar to what we used to talk about all the time. But to finish, what piece of advice would you give a 17-year-old Stuart Sinclair? Uh, to, pro pro probably to enjoy it as much, enjoy it a little more, and and to to be as positive, um, to be as positive as as you can. And I think I'd give that, yeah, I'd give that to anyone. Like you just be as positive as you can, and and just to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean, it's so short. Yeah. See when you talk about enjoying it. Uh, you know, I'm going to pick pick at that a little bit. Do you think if you'd have enjoyed your experiences a little more, you'd still have been as successful? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> that stuff in it. I don't know. It's it's uh, yeah. I, I it, it, the journey's the journey. Do you know what I mean? That ju that that's happened now. Um, all I can do is affect what's going forwards and um, try and develop and and. Um, I look back on that with super fond, fond, fond memories, and maybe, yeah, maybe not. Who, who knows? I don't know, Joe. Yeah, I just... listen, thanks. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Stuart Sinclair as much as I did. Please remember to subscribe, like, and review the show, and head to the ePerform website to sign up for world-class, football-specific information to improve your game every week for free. I'm Joe Partington, see you soon.